We all. Well, I love a good generic. Awesome. Huh? Yeah. What? No. Get in the game, buddy. Can we find Rolling. out what Chloe's dinner was. Rolling. All right. I'm gonna call her. You shut. It's insane. I know. It's so rude. I'm like doing an intervention. All right, cool. Here we go. So. Hello, la 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 <laughs> la. I lost it. What are we gonna say in this one? I don't know what we're gonna talk about. Okay, let's do it. All right, got some topics here for you. So Zoe, you up first. Um, can you talk about playing Erica, just playing this badass vigilante character? Um, well, I was so excited to play Erica for um, many reasons. Uh, uh, some of them very obvious. She is full of life. She is complicated and fragile and interesting and I think uh, one of the reactions that I've been receiving from people is that they w are wondering if I had any trepidations about is that a word yeah Thanks. trepidation. yeah I'm feeling a little insecure yeah it is a word after yeah. I recently said hashtag a word. sustenance <laughs> Use hashtag it right sustenance too. hashtag <laughs> badassery it's all a big blur uh, I, I where people have been asking me if I was a little bit concerned about playing this character that could potentially lack redeeming characteristics or was um, not likable and I was I've been blown away by that reaction because if a dude played it it'd just be morally ambiguous so mm -hmm. well Max, the mic over <laughs> to yeah. take over a point that Zoe just brought up why did you decide to make a movie about a character? That I'd, never I'd of... never seen that character in a movie. It reminded me of all mm -hmm. these movies I used to kind of steal from my brother. He had mm -hmm. like a really extensive VHS collection when he was uh, in high school and I was really young and I wasn't allowed to see R-rated movies and I'd mm -hmm. steal these movies um, from him and watch them. Um, whether it was, a, you know, The Breakfast Club or Risky Business um, or Over the Edge and um, I... You don't, you're not on no. a time limit, no. are you? No, <laughs> He's with us. Um, and um, I, I'd never seen a female in the lead of it before, mm -hmm. and that's what interested me the most. Um, it felt like the, the woman in all those movies was always sort of like the object of desire that the guys win in the end if they do everything right. Um, and I'd never seen a character like Erica in a movie before, and that excited me. Yeah, and I cool. think this is definitely where some coming-of-age movies shine a light on the loss of innocence. This is very much so about the regaining of innocence. This is about a young woman discovering their strength and vulnerability and that um, and that and that she can accept love. She can accept love. Great. And then speaking of things that you normally don't see in movies, the location of it, most films in Los Angeles you think of these iconic areas while the valley is a character in itself. Can you right. talk a little bit about that yeah. and what it means to you? That totally. I mean, we, were, we were both raised in the San Fernando Valley, mm -hmm. and that was a vastly important part of my upbringing. Like, the valley, it's always, like, sort of the less cool part of L.A. on the other side of the hill. And I think you, it's almost like the New Jersey of Los Angeles in a weird way, where I think, like, almost everything's better in the valley, but sort of, like, the other side sort of gets all the credit. But what it breeds is sort of these great sort of old houses, a lot of them built in the 70s, um, that um, have these garages where you spend a tremendous amount of time when you're a kid. And I think I rode my bike everywhere and my friends and I would sort of ride our bikes and get into trouble. And um, it's kind of been immortal, uh, uh, immortalized in, in movies like E.T. and movies mm -hmm. like I mentioned Over the Edge and stuff. But I, I just, when I read the script, I, initially, I, I really wanted to put it in the valley. I go bye-bye. <laughs> I died. Okay. I just and passed away. And then you shot the film in 16 days. So can yeah. you both talk about the preparation you did, Zoe, you for the role of the character, to really shoot something that quick, as well as Z-Max yeah. to... Sure, so we shot the film Flower um, in 16 days. And I think the amount of time that Max and I had to prepare together was probably double that. I, and we just really spent every waking moment of pre-production uh, together yeah. and collaborating and you have you were such an exquisite um, listener uh, he, Max is open and willing to listen to everyone and their thoughts and opinions small big smart dumb all the dumb ones were from me uh, and that was such a that was such a gift to work with a director who was just so 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 open and receptive to that amount of collaboration I think the, 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 the hardest part of, of shooting a movie on a really limited budget and schedule is just making sure everyone's on the same page and, and mm -hmm. really 
thinking about who you cast and who you hire as your crew. And for me, we I did that was probably the best job I did on the movie was was casting her and casting the rest of the actors and hiring people, um, really talented people. Um, that we all, you know, at a certain point, we did so much preparation and, and just talking about it. A lot of these people just, you know, not getting paid until a week before production, but just really put themselves out there. That by the time we got on set, everyone was pretty linked in with the tone and the way it should feel and look. Great. And could you talk a little bit more about the cast? What it was working like working with Adam and Catherine and Joanne? Everyone yeah, I mean, we the cast, I feel deeply lucky to have gotten to make this movie with. I mean, we all kind of took our lead from Zoe and the amount of work and um, sort of fearlessness. She approached the stuff and just, you know, doing, I, like, I feel like we didn't have a lot of stunts in the movie, but I feel like you really are, like, very physically good and, like, did all your own stuff. And just, I remember the, the first fight scene, you really, like, taught us all how to do it. And um, so Catherine, like lawsuits pending. Yeah, liter <laughs> literally. Uh, Catherine Hahn is, you know, one of my favorite actors on the planet, mm -hmm. and genius. she's a genius. And, and the Adam, person. I've been a fan of for forever, and I grew up watching Tim Heidegger videos and trying to rip them off. So he, to have him around, kept us all pretty honest. I think beyond on our toes. I've never been more nervous to work with anyone. And Dylan than Tim. and Maya and Joey are all excellent, and um, you know, is a, a really a tribute to Rich Dealey, our casting director, who um, put them all on my radar and read them and really fought for those guys before I'd gotten to see their stuff. So I'm grateful to him. Great. And then a majority of the crew was female. Can you talk a little bit about that? And Zoe, if you could also expand on um, what was like working with the crew that was more... It was mostly female department heads, and that was really to keep me as honest as possible mm -hmm. in the process of trying to bring to life a character of a 17 year old girl because um, I read the script and I loved it and I wanted to make it and I wanted to try to eliminate as much of the sort of male gaze or whatever stuff goes into things without you even knowing that it's going into things and everyone was just really empowered to keep me honest and tell me you know the, the actors were empowered to say that's not how I would say it or that's not what she would say mm -hmm. and I would listen and production design on-set writer, cinematographer, one of our editors, costume designer, line producer, all were there to create an environment that I thought was definitely the best set I'd ever been on, and I'm, I'm sure that's why. Mm -hmm. Carolina Costa is the DP, and it was uh, genuinely shocking when I came to terms with the fact that that was the first time I'd ever worked with a female DP, and she is such a badass, and she is so gifted, and um, will continue on to do insane work she is she was uh, our leader her biggest champion and fan and uh, I, I absolutely think the world of her and i'm just so grateful and excited um that you hired her me too great i think i just ask what goes behind the art of drawing the perfect dick pic no attention to detail probably attention to detail and being okay with you know not the truth yeah <laughs> literally <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> all right, I think that Ryan, you should do some more on-air work. You're very good. I know it's it's your calling. It's my real but right here. Is it hard to do a junket and take over? <laughs> yeah. Now you know both sides of it. You're like, um, yeah, I think that's we're all good. Great.